Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy Halloween. Today I have for you this Bride of Frankenstein makeup tutorial, so let's get on with it. I'm going to start off by taking some witch hazel and I'm running that over my eyebrows to remove any oils from my skin. And we're doing this because we are going to wax down the brows. I'm going to use Elmer's glue and I'm going to use this little TP dental brush to run that through the brows. I've chosen this because the brush is super tiny so it really does coat every hair so you get a really nice flat finish to the eyebrows. You can do a couple of coats of this glue on its own and it should be sufficient, but because the eyebrows are super slick and really defined, I don't want to paint over these hairs because I feel like it won't give the smoothest finish, it will have a bit of a jaggedy finish. So I'm gonna apply some final ball cap over my eyebrows. So I'm going in with some witch hazel to remove any of the Elmer's glue. Obviously this step is completely optional, you do not have to do it, it's just because I'm a perfectionist. Once the skin's completely dry, I'm going in with Prosade Adhesive and this is going around the circumference of my eyebrows. This is where the vinyl ball cap is going to stick to. Now don't worry if you get this on your hairs because you can remove it. One of my favourite removers for all kinds of prosthetics, whether it's the glue, the actual prosthetic itself, the ball cap, is called ProClean and you can get it from the Makeup Armory. So this is a little bit of vinyl from the end of a ball cap and I'm gonna use this over my eyebrows as I said. The reason for this again is to give me the most smooth finish which means I don't have to paint over the texture of my hair because I really want the eyebrows to be as sleek as possible. So using both hands, I'm stretching that vinyl over my eyebrow and when you let go, it does feel really tight but as soon as you start to remove the excess product from the bald cap, you almost adjust and you can't feel it anymore, it's really bizarre. So to remove the excess vinyl, I'm using some acetone in a rolling motion against the skin to flatten that so that you get a seamless finish and I always roll it towards the prosthetic, that way you're really flattening it against the skin. So for the skin tone, I'm mixing together Armani Luminous Silk in shade 2 and a little bit of the Krylon Super Colour in white. So if you have a foundation you want to use, make sure you're going for a shade that's alabaster or lighter. I'm bouncing that over the skin and over the eyebrows using my Beauty Blender and I'm going to apply this in a couple of layers. Again, I don't want this to necessarily be clown white, but I do want it to be very, very fair. It is more of a theatrical version, so it will be quite thick, but then it is Halloween, it is for an evening look, so don't be afraid to layer it. Also take it down your neck, and then set it in place. I've chosen to use the translucent powder by Laura Mercier. This isn't a white translucent powder like many. This actually has a bit more of a flesh color tone to it. The reason I've opted for this one is because it brings down the white ever so slightly and just makes it more of a believable, very, very fair skin tone. And then over the brows, I'm using a very soft brush to apply extra powder. And then I'm going in with a second layer of the cream. This is where it does start to get quite thick, but it will give you complete opacity, which is exactly what we want for this look. And then I'm using the sponge with the powder to press that into the skin. For the eyebrows, I'm taking the Inglot AMC Gel Eyeliner in number 77, which is black, and I'm mixing that with a little bit of Duraline, also from Inglot, which is a mixing medium. It means that the black becomes slightly more fluid. Her eyebrows kind of dip down slightly at the front. They are also quite low at the front, but then they lift as they get towards kind of the outer third of your eye. And then for the tail of the brow, they lift up with a bit of a flick. So it should look like a nice smooth fluid motion, but it will take you a few goes to kind of get the shape and thicken it. So just take your time and make sure you just try and make them as even as possible. Next I'm going into this very old and well loved Louise Young palette. This is the Essential Eyes palette and I'm using this because I want to use the black. So any matte black eyeshadow will do. And we're going to change the shape of the nose. I'm copying the reference image that I have up of Bride of Frankenstein. She has a bit of a dip on the bridge of her nose in the center and then she has a bit more of a bulbous tip. So I'm rounding it off slightly to make it look wider and then slightly shorter at the front and then just adding some shading to either side of the nose and it just gives it a bit more of a shape that she has. Then underneath the bottom lip, there's also some shading. It's also slightly rounded, like a bit chubbier around the mouth area and also there's a cleft to the chin which I'll add a bit of shade into later. So I'm just making this area resemble hers. It's not to actually look like her but it's to give the same kind of feel. And I'm also using the same colour that we've got on the face just to kind of block out the size of the lips because the actual lipstick itself is a lot shorter. On a fluffy blending brush I'm taking some of the matte black eyeshadow and the matte brown from the palette and I'm working this through the socket. 
The Bride of Frankenstein doesn't actually have any eyeshadow on as such. She does have a very slightly defined socket, so we are going to put that in. And again, this is a theatrical look that's going to predominantly be worn at night, so we do need it to be quite visible. So this is an area we'll come in and rebuild a little bit later. Once you've blended the first layer, go in with a smaller brush and be a bit more precise with your socket line and then again blend it but make sure that that line starts to become more obvious. You could also do a smoky eye with this look, similar to my Cruella look would work with this but I wanted to keep it a bit more traditional. Here I'm going back in with the Inglot Black Gel Liner and I'm taking that across the lid. We're not doing any sort of wing, we are just keeping it a little bit more rounded so we're keeping it slightly thicker on the centre of the eyelid. Like we did with the eyebrows, I've mixed this with the mixing medium called Duraline to make sure it's a little bit more fluid which makes it easier to work with. Here I'm going back in with my small detailer brush, this is one by Zoeva, and I'm reapplying the black brown shade into the socket. This is the perfect brush for this area because it really does give you the right thickness for the socket and it just nestles into that shape so it automatically gives you a carbon copy of your socket line. Then I'm taking my fluffy blending brush and just softening the edges so it creates a very subtle shadow to this area but again we're still keeping it very rounded. Then I'm also taking that same shade underneath the lower eyelashes before softening it into the cream that we've got underneath the eyes. And remember it's important to keep the eyes quite round so don't make it thicker on the outer edge, keep it the same thickness all the way along and then just soften that with a brush. Next I'm going in with a white eyeliner, this is a face liner pencil by Krylon. Then I'm adding on some eyelashes. These ones are by Ardell. These are very, very eye-opening. They're very round, so they're longer in the very center of the lid, which is perfect for this look. She wore very clumpy mascara, so we are gonna go in with a couple of layers. Firstly, to darken our natural lashes, which are currently white, but also to give some drama to the lashes, so they're similar to the original look. But obviously the lashes just add a little bit more of a feminine feel. I will list and link all the products I've used in the description bar so you can get these if you want to try this look for yourself. The mascara I've chosen to use today is by Bobbi Brown, it was the one that was on my desk but it is lovely, it's the Smoky Lash Mascara, so I'm really concentrating on the root of the eyelashes to coat my natural lashes and eradicate that white, but then also dragging it up the mid lengths of those eyelashes to intensify the volume. Going back to my black eyeliner, I'm taking this close to the root of my lower eyelashes and again keeping it really, really rounded, so going from the outer corner towards the inner and then blending the very seam of that with the brush that we used in the socket. So if you didn't have round shaped eyes before, you most definitely will after this. The white along the waterline really helps to open up the eye and make it look that much bigger, which in turn makes it look rounder. You then just want to apply a coat of mascara to those lower eyelashes to match the top ones. Once that's done I could see I just wanted to redefine the socket line a little bit more, making it a little bit more dramatic so I'm just reapplying some colour there. I'm also going to connect that with the outer corner of the bottom lid and the reason I do this is just to emphasise how round the eyes look. Once you've done that, that's the eyes complete. We're going to move on to the contouring of the face. I'm using the same colours that I used in the socket around the forehead. I'm also going to apply that into the hollows of the cheeks as well. I've chosen to use a greyish tone for the contour because it adds to that kind of almost black and white movie finish, but I'm not fully doing a black and white look because I do want to add a little bit of colour to the scars and also to the lips. However, I am still keeping it quite muted so that it does look old school movie like. So I've shaded around the forehead, I've also shaded around the contours of the cheeks and I'm also bringing that down towards the chin. I'm adding a little bit on the chin here because she does have a cleft, you don't have to do this. I just kind of wanted to change my face so it doesn't look too much like me but more of a Bride of Frankenstein character. As I mentioned, I am going to add a bit of colour to the lips. This is Plum Fatale by Laura Mercier. And I want this to look as though if it was in colour, she would have quite red lips. But because of the time and the decade, it is in a black and white, more sepia vibe. This would be the finish that she would have. So I'm creating a bit more of a rosebud pout not taking it as wide as my natural lip line and then I'm going to create a bit more of an ombre finish to the lips 
So I'm taking a small pointy brush by Anastasia Beverly Hills and I'm using the Caviar Stick in the shade Tuxedo by Laura Mercier and I'm using this to kind of darken the outer edges and bring it in slightly to almost create a bit more of a pout in the center. And you can see by adding the shade into the sides of the lips, it almost emphasizes this poutiness to the lips and also the chubbiness of the chin. For the scars around the face, the actual Bride of Frankenstein has them underneath her jaw and around the side of her neck. So I decided to take inspiration from the Bride of Frankenstein that Rick Baker created for MAC Cosmetics and he did the similar style to what I'm doing here. The top half was a bit wider because he actually added some fake screws to the temple area and the actual makeup itself was different. They didn't do the original Bride of Frankenstein brows, which I've done. So to get around that and being able to keep the brows, I've made the actual temple area a lot smaller. I'm using the Shiseido Arch Liner Ink to create the stitches. Now this eyeliner is so perfect for those of you that have smaller eyes or you prefer a more precise eyeliner because it really has a tiny tip and it's slightly angled. So it makes for creating eyeliner a lot easier. I'm going along and just changing some of the angles of the stitches. Some of them are going to be crosses, some of them are just straight. And these ones are a little bit more basic than the ones I did for Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. So if you want something a bit more theatrical and a bit more interesting, then go check that out because it really is quite fun. I've turned an eyeliner brush over and I'm dipping it into a bit of black paint and I'm just creating some dots on either side of the stitch marks to make it look as if they kind of sink into the skin. Then I'm taking a small amount of black paint and I'm really watering it down just to add a little bit of depth to these scars. It doesn't have to be anything too artistic, it just needs to create a little bit more depth. Then I'm going back to my Anastasia Beverly Hills number no. 3 pointed liner brush and I'm dipping it into a small amount of the brown eyeshadow with a tiny bit of the black. So basically the same as what we used on the eye socket and the contour and I'm using this around each of the red painted wounds and I'm making sure to leave a little gap between the shading and the wounds so it has a pale edge into it which adds to that three dimensional effect and by doing this it means you don't have to go in with a highlight shade. If you do want to see what it looks like going a little bit more full on with the highlight and contour for this style of scarring, again check out my Sally tutorial. Once I've put the brown in, I'm going in with a brush that has a tiny amount of the base colour left in the bristles and I'm using that to blend the eyeshadow out because we have set the face, it will be harder to create the perfect blend but if you've got a brush that has a little bit of product in the bristles, it will help with the blending. I'm using the same eyeshadow on a tiny fine liner brush to add a slight shading around the stitch line and like before you want to apply this slightly further away from the actual paint so that you get a false sense of a highlight shade. It was at this point I realised I was supposed to be on a Zoom meeting and I was in the middle of painting my face so... <laughs> And we brought the zoom to me so about half an hour later i was able to continue so these are the scars finished i'm now just going to put the wig on that i made i've separated the front of my hair out and i'm pinning the rest of my hair up and i'm going to pop on a wig cap and then i'm going to pin it in place so it doesn't slip back because i want the front of my hair to go over the front of the wig because this isn't a lace front one so this is the wig I had. It actually had a white stripe in the center. I think it's supposed to be like a really naff Cruella wig. So I cut the bulk of the hair away from the crown and I built up a little totem pole of donuts. And then I lifted the hair around the donuts and cut the remaining length of the hair away. And then I used pins and hairspray to kind of build the hair up over the donuts. And then the white stripe that I cut out of the center, I then placed up either side of the length of the hair to give her that classic white stripe finish. So I placed that over the wig cap. I'm now pinning it to the wig cap itself. And you can see why I've left my fringe out because it's not a lace front wig and it's got a kind of thick seam. I need to disguise it. So by leaving my hair out, I can pin it to the wig and then paint it black. And then that way it will look like it actually comes from my head rather than this really crappy beginning to the wig and looking obviously bulky like a wig. 
If you have time and patience, you can pull the white strands down to meet your natural hairline and just stick them there so they look like they come out of your head. I just decided to leave them where they were because I still thought they looked good. In the meantime, Tommy cut out some foam to create the kind of bulky shoulder pads that she has. And we took an old white bed sheet and Tommy just cut out a square panel at the front and then he wrapped my arms in some bandages and this was the final result. I hope you really love it. Please give the tutorial a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to share it with your friends and family. All the products I've used will be listed and linked in the description bar. Come follow me outside of YouTube over on Instagram at Show Me Makeup and I'll see you next week. Happy Halloween, guys.